Hey guys, what is going on? Doran Code here, and today I'll talk about Reason 8.3, which was released a couple of days ago, and uh, I'll give you the features of this little update. So yeah, let's uh, jump straight into it. First feature I want to talk about is the zoom key. Zoom key is quite convenient because it allows you to um, zoom in on a particular section that you have selected, hit it again to zoom back out. So let's say you're working on your arrangement like this and you decide that you want to uh, make some uh, detailed adjustments to this section right here, this little clip. So uh, I've got the clip selected, I'll hit the zoom key and then it will automatically zoom the sequencer in onto that clip so that I can make my detailed adjustments there. Leave edit mode, hit the Z key again, and we are back to our first view. Okay, uh, that's already the feature explained basically. It's no more, but it's also no less. I find it incredibly time-saving, very convenient. Okay, next feature is the browser. Um, nothing really changed much about the browser except that um, the browser used to be exclusive to the sequencer window. And if you had other windows detached, for example, if you like your mixer in a separate window, there's no browser there, of course. But some people like to make their music uh, from the uh, rack perspective and have this window open here mainly. And some people also have multiple monitors or for other reasons like to detach the rack from uh, the rest from the main uh, window. So once you detach the rack now, you can see you've got two browsers, one for the sequencer and one for the rack. And those two function absolutely independently from each other. So you can browse your stuff here and you can switch back and browse for some different stuff over there. That's the browser. Another feature is, if I just reattach this here, this new um, MIDI focus. It's a very tiny feature, but it's quite useful. Um, let's find an instrument. Okay, um, let's say you're working in the rack and uh, you just created a new device. That means um, the MIDI focus of your master keyboard is on that new device. Uh, but if you want to um, quickly switch back the, mas the uh, keyboard focus of the master keyboard to a different device, you can just click this little button here. And then you can see as I hit a button on my, or as I hit a key on my MIDI keyboard, it allows you to switch MIDI focus from within the rack. Um, let's make a kick there. All right, um, that's the MIDI focus. Okay, probably the biggest feature of this uh, update is the new RV7000 Mark II reverb, which looks like this. It's blue now, but it comes with more than just a color change. It also comes with a new convolution algorithm. Convolution reverb is pretty cool, and uh, I recommend you check out the uh, explanation video on uh, convolution reverb, what it does on the Propellet website. But um, for now, let's listen to our dry snare drums and uh, see what we can come up with here. So this is the first sample preset. It's uh, some sort of hall. Then the second one is uh, kind of like a room. This one's quite trippy and psychedelic. I'm not really sure how I should call that. And then uh, we've also got the load mode which allows us to load in our own impulse responses. Impulse responses are essentially um, recordings of large spaces, not necessarily large spaces, but any space really. And that allows the reverb to extract um, the room information that the audio signal was placed in and emulate reverb from that. So you can basically um, record a big cathedral with a microphone and um, then pull that sample that you recorded into the reverb and then apply the sound, the reverb of that cathedral to whatever your signal is. Okay, uh, let's listen to some impulse responses. Um, I'm looking for something more realistic and openairlib.net. Um, they've recorded all sorts of real buildings and uh, places. Also, by the way, these impulse responses are part of the RV7000 Mark II patches refill, which you can find on the Propellet website. It's a free download. Um, it also comes with combinator patches and all cool sorts of things. But uh, yeah, let's just look for an impulse response quickly. So uh, for the snare, I'm looking for something a bit roomy, not too large, not too small. Um, so let's see. 
So as you can hear, these impulse responses are nothing more but um, somebody clapping or making another high transient noise um, and then recording the reverb tail. This is a bit too long for me. It's also much too large. These ones are in mono. I want something stereo. Let's see. Um, what about, what about, what about? Um, York Minster, also too big. Also too big. Something small. Oh, that might work. Why not? So, uh, let's apply some reverb to the snare drums. So as you can hear, this was the impulse response. These are the dry snare drums. And now this impulse response is being applied to the snare drums. That's pretty cool. Um, let's try some other ones. This one. Uh, not too intense. Maybe uh, let's go for that domestic living room thing again. So of course that comes with some really cool uh, sound shaping uh, capabilities because you can load literally any sample up. It doesn't have to be a designated impulse response. You can just put any sample in there. Uh, so yeah, and also record your own spaces. So um, if you have a sound recorder or a decent phone, uh, you can put it somewhere, take it with you. Then uh, if you have absolute silence, well, that's not even necessary. But, uh, you know, just clap a couple of times, record the reverb tail and load it up in the RB7000. Um, I know that we're only scratching the surface of this reverb unit at the moment, but in the future, I'll make a video on convolution and its creative uh, possibilities. Okay, for now, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.